Greetings, greetings all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. Okay, today I wanted to bring this to you guys, and we can also talk about this on my morning show. Scamming. Now, this is a different type of scam. This is bank scamming, and this has been going on so much. Behind the scenes, you guys are not really paying attention because the news can only put, you know, splats of different things that's happening. But when you focus in and see what's going on, you tend to break down why it's going on and how it's going on. So I brought some things just to your, I wanted to bring to your attention about these new scams, especially if you're banking and you want to protect yourself from your money and with your savings. These are things you have to look out for and the things that you really have to see on an everyday basis that we don't even realize we give our information to. Thank you for all the love you guys have been showing me and new subscribers. I love you guys and the information I gather it, make sure it's, it's real information that can open your minds up so you can think differently and you can go through the world feeling more safe and knowing who to give your information to and things to avoid. So if you're new to this channel, you know to do this channel. Subscribe right now. We're just going to jump right into it. All right? Love y'all. Peace. Here is an investment scam that you've probably never heard of that you need to be very mindful of. So let's say a hedge fund is looking to raise money from new investors or outside capital. A strategy that they will deploy, let's just say hypothetically their goal was to get 10,000 new customers. So here's what they would do. They would take 100,000 people. They would send 50,000 people a postcard that says the S&P 500 is going up this month. They would send the other 50,000 people a postcard that says the S&P 500 is going down this month. Now, based on whatever the S&P does, so let's say it goes up, they will disregard the people that they sent the postcard to saying it would go down. They take the people that they sent a message saying it would go up and they split them in half and they rinse and repeat. They do it again. They do this for three months in a row. And at the end of the third month, they're now down to 12,500 people that they have accurately sent a postcard to that says exactly what the S&P would do for the previous three months. Now they've built credibility to the people that they're sending the postcard to. So this makes people believe that it's not a scam because they received it three months in a row. At the end of the day, it was total bullshit. But this is a scam that has proven to be very successful for a ton of different investment groups and people that are looking to raise money that I think you should be aware of and you should share this with anyone you know to make sure that they don't fall for the same thing. There's this new AI scam going on. If you put out any video on the internet with your voice, they'll take it and they'll call your parents and they say, mom, dad. I'll bring it back. I want you guys to really pay attention to this. And this is one of the things like I told you guys, when you sign up to these services and these apps, that they have to have like permission to maybe um, subscribe to your permission to use your YouTube page, permission to use your email. You're giving them permission for your information. Now, what they do with that data, who knows? I got into a car accident. I need you to send me money oh right now. Oh my God, and, and bro. So, and somebody's parents got fooled and they sent out a whole mortgage to some That's other guy. Crazy. And they got scammed. That's new message, fam. No, no, send this to your parents, fam. Don't like that. It's already. What? If you put out any video on the internet with your voice, they'll take it and they'll call your parents and they say, Mom, Dad, I got into a car accident. I need you to send me money oh right now. Oh my God, and, and bro. So, and somebody's parents got fooled and they sent out a whole mortgage to some That's other guy crazy. and they got scammed. That's new message, fam. No, no, send this to your parents, fam. Don't like that. That's it's already tough enough for the elderly. They're already getting caught with some online yeah. scam. So this is even that next level. Can't even trust shit no more, bro. Yeah, bro. Do you think the whole system's just gonna crash? If you think about it, if you really, really bag it, bro, we're kind of stable right now. We're like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. But the more little cracks, Chat GPT effects. I think David Cho, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast. He said he fired his lawyer. He fired his lawyer because he asked.
asks questions to his lawyer and he asks questions to chat GPT at the same time and chat GPT gave him the exact same answers. <laughs> I think there's a cycle though. Like you see, it's like- I received a phone call stating they were from the RBC fraud department. It was last month when Melanie Gardner of Brockville got a phone call from someone claiming to be with RBC. She was told her bank account was in jeopardy and she needed to transfer funds to keep them safe. Had totally convinced me that my account had been compromised. In a series of transactions, she was told to e-transfer money from her account, which would later be returned, but in the end, she was scammed out of $34,000. I'm a single mother, um, and all, every bit of money that I had is totally gone. Gardner banks with RBC and was told she would not be refunded the money. A spokesperson told CTV News, RBC will never ask you to participate in an undercover operation to prevent a fraud. How hard is it to scam somebody with uh, just their wallet? But there's actually this device, you can put it right up to your fucking, like wallet. I want you all to pay attention to how easy it is in these times to get somebody's information. You got that chip on it? That's what we researched and that's why we hit our yes, credit right. cards from you. You said you hit the credit cards? Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> Unless I got it in my pocket like that, or like just like this on some shit. And you can just, just walk up to me and be like, my bad, bro. Oh, and then I don't got it. Just like that. Just like that. It happened just like that. Everything, yes. I'm Tommy G now after that. <laughs> so you can steal what? My credit card, my debit card. Anything but a chip. Now picture this you have my credit card and debit card. You just ran my account empty. Do yeah. you feel bad? Nah. Banks will give you the money back. You ever heard of like a TLO lookup? Like if I had your first and last name, your social will come up every day. I could probably find you real quick. No, 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 no. no. Ooh, you're 29, eh? It's your birthday? You got a criminal record. Yeah, I got a record. Damn, what for? I did a prank channel. I, I had a fake ball sack. What? I was had hanging out of my pants and an old couple. At the same time, it's clever, but at the same time, it's dangerous. Very dangerous. But I was really showing them my ball sack, so they arrested me for indecent exposure. They're registered uh, <laughs> f***ing No, I'm not a registered <laughs> sex offender. <laughs> How do you describe yourself in the scamming world? I feel like the whole world's a scam, but they just look at me as a bad guy. If I take money from you, you're going to get the money back. Nobody's going to hurt. I mean, it would be f***ed up if I simps walk you and then just start posting. If you think this guy, he knows all the tricks, just imagine how many people just... Whatever. Like some crazy shit on your Instagram. Is that possible? Yes. Do you think you're a bad guy? Nah, I feel like he's worse people. Robin Hood was well liked because he took from the rich and gave to the poor. Yeah. Do you view yourself as a modern day Robin Hood? Take from the rich and give to the poor. I really take from the poor and then the rich is me. What wallet do you recommend to people to protect them from scammers? There is no wallet. Or if it was, I wouldn't tell nobody. Okay, so how can someone avoid that wallet scam? Use Apple Pay, I guess. So but just don't we, carry a wallet? Yeah, don't carry a wallet. That's the only way to avoid it. Yeah. How much does this thing cost? 38. $38,000. Just for the pendant. How can I tell this is real or fake? You gotta get a diamond sister. We can go to the jewelry store. My clock's ticking. I mean, eventually, right? I mean, even Al Capone got, got you know? I'm not Al Capone, no. I'm Punch Made Dev. Undefeated. What's your guys' take on scamming? Oh, the, the government scamming. They doing bill, billion dollar scams. What's the little millions and shit we take? What's that gonna hurt? Showing jewelry and things that he has bought and he probably doesn't have any statements where that came from anything else maybe views if he can change things around but for the most part it's not really smart to show that you're doing this type of stuff and then present yourself showing the money and the things that you bought with it it's not that smart we're clean compared to the last time you were here and that's what tipped it off exactly i mean but you can see by the picture look at the buttons underneath it the real buttons. The real buttons. I mean, there's a night and day difference. Not many people are gonna be able to realize and detect that, and that's the sad thing about it. After this experience, I'll probably be using cash. Well, it all started at this self-checkout. So I go in and I notice, like at the little thing I'm at, the keypad was sparkling, like brand new. And so I yanked on it and it was loose. And so I called over the attendant and um, he and he uh, was like, no, it's not a skimmer. And I said, it's a skimmer. And so we yanked it off together all the way. And he was like, oh, my God. And I said, see, you know, it's a skimmer. John posted this photo on social media and it took off. So we asked Safeway a bunch of questions, including if they can confirm that this was indeed one of those credit card skimmer devices that can steal info like card numbers, pins and security codes. This is what they said. Quote, Safeway takes these issues seriously and is investigating this matter in coordination with law enforcement to ensure appropriate action has been taken. John, now reflecting on his post, 
seen by hundreds of thousands. I'm glad that I can make sure people are aware of this because I do think that it's important that people are checking. If you shop at the Georgetown Safeway, I'd be checking your bank statement. Careful, y'all, look. Look at him. Hello, mate. Is that your is that your two pound there, mate? That's all right. Don't worry. Always think. You gotta so always I just his card. So now I have his card with his pin number, and he has no idea. Mate, you're right. Remember yeah. me a minute ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I told you about the two pound coin on, on the uh, on the floor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I said it was yours. Yeah. Do you know what uh, I done? No. Well, where's your bank card that you use for that cash machine? Oh, there's my card. There's your card there. Yeah. Is it your card? Read the name on it. Oh. Is that your card? No. It's not your card, is it, mate? Mr. Yeah, that's me. That's my card. All right? And here's your card. Right there. It's your name on it, yeah? Yeah. So I'll take my card back. And what? also, you didn't cover up your PIN number because your PIN isn't it? Uh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Ah. Police warning you to pay close attention next time you're in the checkout line. Have a look at this video from a Walmart in central New York. Right there, you can see three suspects. What they're doing right here is they're attaching a credit card skimming device to, play, uh, to the device where you place your credit or debit card in. The whole thing takes less than 30 seconds. The cashier was standing right there the whole time. She didn't notice. Cases of this crime have happened at 16 different Walmarts across New York and Maine. So skimming is when thieves attach a device to a payment terminal. Often you won't notice it. That device then collects your data and your PIN number. The FBI says skimming costs consumers more than a billion dollars each year. So how can you stay safe? Technology makes things sometimes safer and better. They also make it easier for criminals. And they're always working on the next front. We stop them one way and they find another way to do it. Well, experts say the best tip to stay safe is make sure you cover your pin as you enter it. The suspect caught on that surveillance video is still on the run. Walmart released a statement saying, quote, providing customers with a safe shopping experience is a top priority, adding that it's reviewing protocols and adding enhanced security measures to better protect in-store transactions. Here you guys, there's a skimmer on here. This is the skimmer. What? See that? The skimmer. See that? You see here? It's not broken. You don't know if the, the owners could be doing it. Yeah. Okay. It's a skimmer. This is how you, uh, this is how you uh, take people's money, get their credit card information. This is how you get people's credit card information. The, the scammer will, will put this on, people will use their credit card, it will capture their credit card information, and that's what happens. Yeah. You have to call the police, no? Well, yeah, but... So now we can use it and it's fine. So now I'll pay for it. What's up, y'all? Let me put y'all on game real quick. Please share this video so you guys do not get scammed by the new scam that's going on. So scammers are getting your information through public record. They pay for the report and they get your information. They figure out where you stay, your date of birth, your phone number, and who you bank with. They will manipulate the... Excuse me. They will manipulate the phone number of the bank that you bank with call you with their caller ID saying they are with so-and-so bank bank of america chase or bmo and they're from the fraudulent um department of fraud department and they will ask you about these charges and say hey did you have these charges did you approve of them you tell them no and they say hey you won't be responsible when you hear that hang up the phone go inside your bank don't call your bank go inside your bank ask them about the charges if they say no then you know it's a scam so don't y'all get caught up be safe be smart y'all please when you go to the grocery store please make sure that you check your receipt 
You would not believe what just happened to me. So I went to a local Aldi here in St. Louis, Missouri. I already called the hotline because of what just happened. But oh my God, I can't believe that he just tried to steal money from me. So I only had three items. It's bad enough that the inflation is what it is. The three items came up to a total of $19.96. I used my cash app cord because it gave me immediate re- uh, alerts. And I did tap to pay, right? When I hit the tap to pay and the screen came up to ask me if I want to cash back, he hit a button on his side, the cashier, and it went away. And guess what happened? The payment didn't go through because he he he, su- he submitted for me to give them $100 in cash back that I didn't have. So here I am thinking like, why my car get declined for $19 when I set a budget? Cause I, that's why, that's what you you do with cash. If you set a budget, make sure you don't go over it, right? So I said, well, sit my stuff to the side. I got a fraud alert. He looking a little nervous, right? So I go over to the side and I look at my cash app and I'm trying to dive into what just happened and I'm seeing exactly this. It says not enough cash for a hundred and nineteen dollars and sixty four cent. So I went back up to him and I said, so you tried to charge me $119.64? He said, no, Uh uh-uh. Oh, so you tried to get cash back of 100. And it was two people ahead of me and it was a black lady. And she said, when she left, he said, I guess she doesn't want her cash back and put the money to the side. So please, please be careful when you out here shopping. This is not on Aldi. This is on this worker here, this white guy named Corey, who is trying to steal money. He is stealing money from people using the cash back system. Please be aware of the scams that are going on in this world. And I know that this happened to me on purpose because God knows I use my platform for everything. I make a video about me going to go to the doggone uh, 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 tree. So God is doing, he did this on purpose. Please be watchful. Make sure you share this with your friends. Save it. I don't care. Repost it. This needs to be out so it doesn't happen to someone else. Because I'm pretty sure I'm not the first. I hope I'm the last because I reported his butt. Yeah, I did. But please be sure that you're paying attention to what is actually being debited from your account. i see y'all later. So I'm in Joanne's by notions and I get a weird text from my sister saying that um, it's okay if the car's okay and I'm like what is going on um, my parents got a phone call from someone claiming to be a lawyer um, saying that I was in a two-car accident with um, someone with a seven-month-old pregnant woman um, somewhere and I was being being like charged with like manslaughter and I was going to go to jail and they needed my parents to post bail for me um so apparently there's a new scam going around um but but I called my family and I'm like um, I'm just buying zippers this is 7-eleven in Springfield what the hell am I look what in the motherfucker? oh hell <laughs> motherfucking no well I'm never going over there again oh I- Hey guys, I was just getting money out the bank and this guy, awesome guy right here, he saw something. Look at this. If you come to the Bank of America on West El Camino and you see this a strip like this, it's a card scanner reader. I went I went over here to this ATM machine. He literally saw it didn't work. It this doesn't have it. This one doesn't have it. These are good. These are these how are you good. check. Because if these are removed, someone took them off. Are you guys hearing him? Loose. Or there's missing labels. Don't use that machine. If all these machines are supposed to look identical, and if now, one of these things doesn't look like the others. So look at so you guys. You, you, you guys heard what he said. Now look. Now now look. Now look. Look what he said. It, like this right here has the bank. It has the Bank of America. Their their rights. It has the Visa sign. Now look. It has the same information, right? Where's that information at? Where's there's it, nothing there. But then he took it off and look. That's bad, bad for business. Like that's whoever did that, the, the police need to come. That's oh, yeah. not good. That's it. Wow. Like I always tell you guys, you know, once trust is broken in America, like I always tell you guys, once trust is broken in America. 
chaos will always be the outcome. We gotta find ourselves in a place where even the banks, you know, things have to get more structured and people have to start thinking about the little people instead of just the people on top because eventually what's gonna happen is people are gonna scam their way to the top until they take over. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you ought to do to this channel. Subscribe.